the Joe Rogan experience. I was that typical kid who worshipped evil Knievel. White oh, trash yeah. kid. I mean, that's, Maybe that would be a fucking movie, <laughs> That man. would be a movie. That would be a fucking movie, mm-hmm. man. I worked with his son. I worked with... Uh, Robbie Knievel? Robbie Knievel yeah. during the Fear Factor days. Oh, really? Yeah, he did something on Fear Factor. Yeah, <laughs> it was cool. He's a nice guy. But, you know, I was like, damn, dude, your dad was a fucking psycho. Yeah. This shit that that guy subjected his body to. It's crazy. And when you Ooh. watch that shit and you watch the Philadelphia Flyers, that time in the 70s yes. was fucking mental. It was mental. And you're just a little kid watching Evil Knievel and listening to Alice Cooper and watching hockey fights, and that determines who you become. Yeah, Evil <laughs> Knievel was just, I mean, there's a, I think it was a Rolling Stone piece of his body where they showed all of his x-rays. And all of the, Crazy. the bone breaks and steel rods that were in his, the various bones that were screwed together. I'm like, fuck, man, what kind of pain was this guy in? I don't know. I mean, did you see the? There's a fairly new documentary. I think it's called Being Knievel. I think it's amazing. Well, it's, it's maybe a couple of years old, actually. But um, yeah, just any one of those crashes. I think there's a famous one in London, and he jumps over the double decker buses, and you can see him land. And the bike looks like it's made out of rubber, and he looks like he's made out of rubber. And you're like, it looks like every bone in his body just broke. Oh. And that's, not, you know, that's going to do it again and do it again. Oh, God. I mean, that was his thing. Imagine that being your thing. Your, your thing is you fly through the air on something that's supposed to stay on the ground. <laughs> yeah, a full size <laughs> Harley that's not made for jumping At or all. doing anything. At all. Or landing, for that matter. Doesn't have any particularly like, <laughs> like b- bouncy shocks or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hitting like, boom, ka dunk. And just, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's a weird thing to be that guy because there was, I mean, there was some people in the past that had done. Um, some pretty interesting shit and risk their lives, but he was doing it consistently with an engine. That was like right. the thing about him. It's like, and he was like one of the most famous people in America. Yeah, with the, like, like an American flag suit. Yeah, it's like the Fonz and yes. Evil Knievel. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Uh, being, being Knievel, evil. you gotta see that if yeah, you haven't being, seen it. Wow, it's amazing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, what a crazy and this stuff character. in there that kind of blew my mind because we all remember the Snake River Canyon thing. Yes, but they were showing how out of control it was with the people that showed up and were so drunk, and the crowds were fighting and crazy, just on their own. It's it's mental, <laughs> like just what was going on around the the event. Yeah, that's one of those things you can't really do today the same way. Like, if someone jumps over things today, it's like so many people are jumping. Like, you're not going to get famous that way. Because, like, think about the just the bananas shit those BMX guys do. They're flipping oh, yeah. three times in the air. It's commonplace almost. Yeah, no, watching Evil Knievel is like watching the original King Kong with your kids. Right, You know, it's right. like, like, oh, that was a big deal once. Uh, he jumped seven buses, whatever, I did it on my bike. Yeah, that would be a great film. I don't know what you have to do now. Catch bullets with your bare hands or something. <laughs> like for people, oh, that guy's rad, bullet man. Uh, you know. Well, now there's people doing parkour and climbing buildings with no ropes. <laughs> it's like, you ever watch that kid, Alex Honnold? Do you know who he is? No. He's the free solo oh, guy. Oh, the free solo guy, yeah. Oh. I still haven't seen that yet, but everyone He's tells me. He's so it's... nice and so normal. When you talk to him, I've had him on the podcast a couple of times. And I'm like, how are you the guy that's wanting to climb the face of these <laughs> fucking cliffs? And some of so them, weird. they're they're not straight up and down. They're and leaning holding backwards. on by a finger. Yeah, he's to... got like hands wedged in these crack. Look at that picture. Yeah, that's mad. That doesn't make you shit your pants. <laughs> and he's getting older, and he's starting to get injured now too. Oh. Uh. And you know, he's for the first time in his life, he's had you know, like you know for a long time, he had no injuries, no problems, and he's. Yeah, well, he's been doing this a long time now. His body's not holding up the way it used to. When do you retire? Like, when are you Muhammad you Ali retire or when Evil Knievel f- and you know it's done? When the finger stuff. slips, son. Yeah. <laughs> that's when you retire. Oh, I that's... mean, that's what all of the people that have done it before him think. They think, look, this is going to end badly. Yeah. You know? It's, it's crazy to be known as the guy who's doing something that scares the fuck out of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> You're the guy that everybody's watching to eventually fall. Look at that. Like, look at the angle. That yeah, he, that doesn't even seem possible. He, well, he's incredibly strong. His hands, like, he's a, a slender, thin guy, but he has gorilla hands. Yeah. The fat-ass fingers, and he just can shove them into these cracks and hang on in place. 
he was telling me a story about how he was free solo climbing this one mountain when he realized, you know, like fucking 300 feet up that he forgot his powder. <laughs> so he's got no chalk. So he's, you know, things are getting slippery. He's climbing and he finds these guys that are connected to ropes halfway up. And he says, hey, I don't have any powder. Can I borrow your chalk? <laughs> so the guy gives him his chalk bag. He makes it all the way to the top and leaves the chalk bag at the top for the guy. It's like, what? One of those guys are like, that guy doesn't have any ropes. <laughs> As he's going by. No ropes or chalk. He doesn't have <laughs> any chalk. fucking chalk. Like, you know, like if you ever lifted weights, like well, that bar gets slippery. It sucks. Like you need chalk yeah. to grip things right so you can, you can really get a hold of stuff. But that's just weights. You could put the weights down. <laughs> yeah, so the worst fall is going to be three feet to the floor. Oh, fuck. I can't, I can't even watch his stuff. I'm like, my hands are sweating right now thinking about it. <laughs> I haven't watched that, but I got to. Everyone's always talking about it. No, it's an amazing documentary. But he's a, just a fascinating guy because it doesn't make sense. He's not like some Steve-O type guy who's yeah. just a, a maniac and just like always trying to freak people out and do the next thing. Like, no, he's really- I'm putting a rocket on a sharpen cart. Yeah. And crashing into a brick wall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like when Steve-O comes up with ideas, like he'll tell them to me. I'm like, don't do that. Don't do that, man. Yeah. You know, like stop doing that. Oh. But I get it. That's who he is. He's yeah. a, he's a le- legitimate bona fide maniac. The yeah. Alex Honnold guy is so calm and peaceful. You know, and he's, he said, like, he's like, well, you know, I'm pretty mellow. You know, it's like when the whole thing is pretty mellow. It's like when things go wrong, that's when it's not mellow. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of how everything is. <laughs> yeah. 